And now, in studio, bringing his Midwest values from the show me state to the land of San Diego. He's a triple threat, licensed as an attorney, mortgage broker, and a top producing realtor who's crushing the competition. Here to deliver you what's happening in the trenches of the market, your host, Michael Gaddis. Welcome back to the Michael Gaddis Show on AM 1170, The Answer. I am your host, Michael Gaddis of FrontierLoanGroup.com. And I'm going to talk a little bit about a question that I get asked quite a bit. As all of you know, I work a lot with reverse mortgages, and I travel around to a lot of uh, various events, senior events, senior expos, health, we- health and wellness expos. And one of the questions I get asked a lot is the difference between a home equity line of credit and a rever- uh, HECM loan uh, line of credit. So one of the things that you can get, because a reverse mortgage, as you, mem- as you remember, our home equity conversion mortgage, as some of you prefer, one of the features of them is that you can obtain a line of credit through a, uh, through a HECM. Now, one of the questions, as I said, that I get asked a lot is, well, what's the difference? Why shouldn't I just get a HELOC? Why would I get a HECM? Well, a home equity line of credit is basically a loan that you take, uh, get basically a reserving the equity in your house for you to obtain cash distributions. So basically, if you needed some money, you can just pull it straight out of the, of the home equity line of credit. Now, a home equity line of credit um, requires that you, you pay monthly interest on the payments uh, that you have um, from the cap, from the interest, I mean, from the principal that you've withdrawn. So if you take money out of your HELOC, you have to pay it back during your lifetime. You have to make payments on it. So a lot of times people, especially seniors who are on fixed incomes, if they take a, 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 you know, a lump sum payment out of their, out of their HELOC, you know, part of their net disposable income every month has to go to pay, make it paying that HELOC payment. Well, in a HECM line of credit, it, you don't have to do that. Obviously, your payments are deferred. Um, you still pay interest on it, but it's a deferred payment, so it doesn't come out of your net disposable income. So let's say, for example, you have a fixed income of $3,000 a month. You pull money out of a HELOC. Let's say your payment, your, your repayment would have to be $300 a month. Immediately out of out of the three thousand, you have to subtract three hundred to to basically uh, you know compensate for the fact that you have to make the payment on the HELOC. But on a HECM, you can take the money out and you don't have to make a payment on it. So your net disposable income every month stays the same. Perhaps though, one of the greatest features of of the, or greatest differences between the two is that the HECM line of credit. Uh, allows you a line of credit that grows on the unused portion of the uh, amount. So let's say you get a line of credit for $100,000. You do not pay interest on it until you draw them. I mean, you do not pay interest on it or any payments on it until you withdraw it. But you do get a, uh, have a growth rate. So line of credits allows unused lines of credit to grow at the same rate that the borrower is paying on the used credit. Uh, thus, the line of credit amount grows. So what that means is if your interest rate combined with your F, uh, FHA mortgage insurance is, let's say, 4.875, then your line of credit would grow by 4.875. So if you had $100,000 of a line of credit in a reverse mortgage, the line of credit in the reverse mortgage would grow on the unused portion by 4.875% per year which means that it will, it will actually increase over time, but a HELOC doesn't do that. In fact, a HELOC is the exact opposite. A HELOC is basically just a commitment by the bank to lend up to a certain amount of time, and it can be decreased or closed without warning to the borrower. And for a lot of you out there, when the housing crisis first occurred, or started to occur back in 2008 and early 2009, one of the first things that lenders did was that they basically started looking at the open lines of credit that they had available because the housing prices were decreasing. So they were scrambling to try to protect themselves. So what they did is they, in some cases, they reduced the line of credit. In other cases, they froze it completely, basically shut it down. Now that shutdown caused a lot of anxiety to people who did not, and you know, who were using it for business or for even for to subsidize their own personal life. And without warning, all of a sudden, they didn't have access to those funds. 
and it caused them a lot. It caused a lot of problems. I mean, a lot of problems. But in a in a reverse mortgage line of credit, a Heckam line of credit, you don't have to worry about that because it's insured by the FHA. And so what that means is you're protected against a uh, you know a housing drop. You're basically hedging against a housing drop because in the event that a house that the housing market drops uh, and the house values fall, drop, they cannot come in and freeze it. They can't decrease it because of the insurance. There, you are guaranteed to have that line of credit grow. Now, some people will come and say, well, you know, I'm not sure that having that open line of credit is, is a wise thing. You know, it's too tempting to have a, an open line of credit like that. And, you know, I, here's, what, here's what my philosophy is. I, I meet with a lot of seniors, okay? And when I meet with seniors, I have intimate knowledge of their financial situation. And you, it would really amaze you at how many seniors are living, page, you know, basically on such a such a, 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 a fixed income that they don't have the ability to do anything extra, like go to the movies or you know go out to eat. They just can't do it because it upsets their 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 budget because they are on such a fixed income. Even the even increases in prices to utilities, you know, gas prices increases affect them. I mean that's how that's how they're living. They're and a lot of them are house rich but cash poor, which means they're existing but not living. And that's where uh, you know establishing a line of credit could it could really be beneficial because imagine this. Let's say you have a you're on a you're one of these seniors and you have a monthly income of let's say social security and a small pension of let's say $2000 a month and you still have a house payment of let's say $900 a month. So out of the $2,000 a month that you get, out of that $2,000, $900 immediately goes to your mortgage payment, which does include your property taxes and insurance. So that means you're living basically on $1,100 a month to, to, to basically cover your car payments, your food, your utilities, your property tax payments. You know, $1,100 will not go that far when you start adding all those things up. But there are a lot of seniors out there like that. So let's say we go in and I take a look at their situation and I propose a you know a, you know a heckum to them, and that what we, the first thing that we do is we eliminate the mortgage payment, right? So if we eliminate the mortgage payment, that alone is going to be a nine hundred dollar a month swing. So if they were surviving ba barely with eleven hundred dollars of disposable income after paying their mortgage, an extra nine hundred dollars is really going to make a huge difference to them. So what I usually tell them is if after we pay off their mortgage payment, if there is, a, if there is the availability to establish a line of credit, you know, I, I usually strongly encourage them to do that. Now they have other options. They could take a 10-year payment. They could take a, a term payment. They could do, there's other options. You can obtain money from your reverse mortgage. But I like the line of credit because it grows. In other words, what some people do is this. By eliminating their mortgage payment alone, it allows them a lot of financial freedom. But what they want to do is keep an emergency fund available in case they need assisted living or you know emergencies come up, whatever it might be. So they don't need to tap into the lump sum. So what they need to do is just basically establish a line of credit, let it sit there, and over time that lump sum will grow and grow and grow and to the point where they, when they do need it, it's a lot more than what it was. And that is a big difference between the HELOC and the line of credit because their access to, to funds, let's say it's 4.875 and they, they have a $100,000 line of credit and they don't touch it for 10 years. That line of credit will grow by almost 50% by the time it's you know done. So that 100,000 becomes almost 150. And those are rough numbers. These, these are not actual, you know, I'm sure that there's differences in, in that. But, uh, almost $150,000. So just by them sitting there and having that line of credit growth potential really, really enhances their ability and access to funds in the future. So, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, it doesn't work well. Let me just say this. It doesn't really work well if, if people have a tendency to, like, go to uh, Paul a Casino or they're real spend, you know, spendy people where they, as soon as they have access to cash, they just go on, like, world tours and things like that. In fact, that's one of the things I was reading on the CFPB. I read the Consumer Finance Protection Bureau website every now and then, and it has critiques and warnings about you know reverse mortgages and be careful about this and that. And one of the things it said on there uh, when I read an article yesterday was that 
that basically see some seniors who have access to the money use it really fast and then they're left with nothing it's kind of like kid in the candy store syndrome but you know I mean the bottom line is we can only coach people as much as we can and, and my, what I always tell my clients is if you don't need to use it don't use it let it sit there let it grow you know eliminating your mortgage payment alone has just really swung the pendulum in your direction so um, you know I really believe that lines of credit um, it, through the through the Heckin product is really a really good uh, um, alternative now there are lots of different uh, programs in the reverse reverses are very flexible but that line of credit growth is extremely valuable so I think that when it comes down to it if you're analyzing the, the, the value of having a HELOC versus a Heckin line of credit if you are in one of those situations like I was talking about where you have a very finite amount of, of, of net income every month then you know basically eliminating that mortgage payment establishing that line of credit could be of extreme value to you so anyway um, after the break we're going to come back and we're going to talk a little bit more about reverse mortgage specifically I'm going to go over some of the frequently asked questions that HUD says they receive about reverse mortgages so you're listening to The Michael Gatta Show on AM 1170, The Answer.